Imagine building an entire nuclear reactor, millions of pounds of concrete and steel, coolant loops the size of half a city block, and never turning it on. Not even once, not for a second. Welcome to America's so-called ghost reactors. Multi-billion dollar nuclear facilities that were built during the Cold War and beyond and abandoned before they ever generated a single watt of electricity. These things are the real-life version of a SimCity save file where the player rage quit halfway through construction, but the citizens are still required to pay taxes on them 50 years later. Today, we're breaking down the corrupt political dealings behind them, the spiraling costs, the shady utility companies who helped it all happen, nuclear paranoia, and the unhinged engineering belief that we could just put these things wherever. I'm King Trout, and sometimes people lie on the internet. Strap in and strap on. This is the story of America's biggest energy project that we ever built and then never used. One thing I do way more than the average person is move halfway across the country, seemingly on a whim, about twice a year. And with that comes many things. New home, new grocery store, new barber, and the realization that were anything to happen, I don't have a doctor. That's where the sponsor for today's video comes in. ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free website where you can easily search and compare in-network doctors to find the one that's right for you. Whether you need someone nearby, in-network, or with appointment times that actually work with your schedule, ZocDoc takes out all the guesswork. No phone calls, no waiting on hold, just results. You get verified patient reviews, detailed profiles, and a real sense of who you're seeing before you ever step foot in their office. The best part is you see doctors' actual appointment openings, pick your time, and book instantly. Just a few clicks and you're done. And these appointments happen fast, usually within 24 to 72 hours, but sometimes even that same day. Plus, ZocDoc has over 100,000 providers across nearly every specialty. Primary care, dental, eye care, mental health, urgent care, everything. It's your one-stop shop for healthcare, and it's completely free. So stop putting off those appointments. Go to ZocDoc.com slash KingTrout or click the link in the description below and book that appointment today. Thank you to ZocDoc for sponsoring the video. Back to it. Let's rewind to the American era of nuclear hype. In the 1950s and 60s, nuclear energy was all the rage, and the marketing was crazy. After World War II, President Eisenhower introduced the Atoms for Peace program, which pushed nuclear energy like crazy. Companies could apply for government-backed loans, which would feed them research and uranium like it was going out of style. It's clean, it's modern, it's the future. Energy companies were informed about the bill, and what they heard was, we can build a nuclear power plant at no cost to ourselves. <laughs> okay. By the late 1960s, America had ordered over 250 nuclear reactors, more than any other country on Earth. These utility companies would order them, and the American government was going to foot the check for their construction. The idea was simple. America needs electricity. These utility companies can provide that electricity with these nuclear power plants they'll build, and the American taxpayer pays for them. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it turns out, a lot. The engineering was essentially that contractors would propose the cost for a nuclear reactor being somewhere in the neighborhood of $400 million, and the reality being that it would cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $4 billion, and these companies also realizing that there was nobody who could run the fucking things. Enter the Washington Public Power Supply System, or WPPS. S for short. An acronym pronounced WOOPS. Yes, that is right. The first ghost reactors in America were overseen by a government agency whose name is pronounced WOOPS. They planned to build five nuclear reactors. They successfully completed zero on time, zero on budget, two were ever turned on, and three were abandoned entirely. The project collapsed so catastrophically, it was the largest municipal bond default in United States history until the 2000s. That's right, whoops, built multi-billion dollar reactors that sat unused, half-built, and slowly decaying in the woods, all at the expense of you. 
the taxpayer. But again, all of this was in the 1950s and 60s, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, it's the 1970s. In the 1970s, inflation had skyrocketed, interest rates were through the roof, and multiple wars in the Middle East had caused there to be a lot of concern about oil prices. Now, obviously, these are issues that we've long since moved past, but if you use your imagination, I bet you can put yourself in their state of mind. Also, nuclear oversight went from, hey, don't drop that uranium, to about 12,000 safety procedures. Not to say those are necessarily a bad thing, but they do cost money. And all of this came to a head in 1979 at Three Mile Island. The Three Mile Island disaster was a partial nuclear meltdown, which was handled perfectly and there were no long-term consequences. But when it happened, people freaked the f*** out. Public sentiment in regards to nuclear energy being the future instantaneously flipped as people watched this occur on live television. There was another event that happened a few years later, which we'll get to, which made it worse. But yeah, Three Mile Island did not rub people the right way. Regulators panicked, utility executives panicked, politicians panicked, costs doubled, then they tripled, and construction on all of these power plants essentially ground to a halt. Who stopped these projects? Well, let's take a moment to look into the Tennessee Valley Authority, the largest federally owned utility company in the United States of America. TVA ordered 17 reactors, of which they finished a whopping seven. They canceled 10, including Hartsville A, Hartsville B, Yellow Creek, Phipps Bend, and Belafonte 1 and 2. Absolute disasters which we will touch on shortly. Billions of federal dollars were spent. Entire towns were constructed to house workers. Coolant towers were erected. Lakes were dug for reactor coolant. And not a single watt of electricity was generated. These nuclear power plants became wildlife refuges, urban exploration spots, filming locations, and the most depressing monuments to federal government spending. TVA even tried to sell abandoned nuclear reactors to private companies, like they were used cars or something. I know she ain't looked too great, but she ain't never melted down on me. Belafonte deserves its own section because it is king of the ghost reactors. The construction history is so convoluted, I literally can't even be bothered to take it to memory. It was originally started in 1974 when construction stopped in 1988, which was restarted in 1993, which then stopped again in 2005, which then restarted again in 2010, which then stopped again, again, again in 2017. And it was almost sold to a con man in 2018. And no, I'm not making that part up. That's true. That happened. The reactors were 85% complete at one point. So close you could almost hear the uranium humming in anticipation. And TVA still abandoned them. All of this, mind you, was funded by your tax dollars. Either way, now both are sitting there, two giant nuclear monuments to indecision. But wait, it gets worse. Zion Nuclear Power Station in Illinois actually did get turned on, but it shut down early and ever since has essentially been in decommissioning limbo. Ever since, it's essentially been sitting in nuclear purgatory. The operator more or less said, Zion is so costly to operate it would be cheaper to just abandon this multi-million dollar nuclear reactor than it would be to continue maintaining it. Let's get into the economic death spiral, the unsexy but incredibly important part. Nuclear reactors are incredibly expensive to build. Like, there are only three major corporations who can afford to do this expensive. The combination of rising interest rates, rising construction costs, mismanagement, inflation, and public fear have since made nuclear power financially 
unless you are the federal government or you have billions of dollars at your disposal. Private investors bailed. States refused rate hikes on utilities, understandably so, and banks got spooked. All of these nuclear projects were originally fronted by the federal government, who was offering essentially a blank check until they found out how much it would cost, and they cut the ties. Projects froze mid-construction. Reactors sat half-completed while banks argued over the corpses. Essentially, the federal government funded multi-billion dollar raccoon breeding grounds. All because people got spooked out by Three Mile Island. And Chernobyl. Public sentiment further shifted against nuclear power after the catastrophic meltdown of the Chernobyl power plant in Ukraine in 1986. In a surprise to literally no one, the commies fucked something up catastrophically. And more or less, that's the reason Americans are afraid of nuclear power to this day. In the 2000s and 2010s, America attempted what was called the nuclear renaissance. The idea was, let's try building new reactors again. We've since learned our lesson. Spoiler alert! No, we didn't. The two major projects that define this era were the, uh, I want to say Vogtel. I can't find how to pronounce it online, but I'm going to say Vogtel. Units 3 and 4. Construction started in 2009 and was eventually finished in 2023 and 2024, with the original estimated cost of $14 billion ballooning to over $35 billion, making this the most expensive construction project in Georgia state history. The other modern project being the VC summer units 2 and 3. Total cost, over $9 billion spent. Status, completely abandoned. Power output, well, if you threw a 9-volt battery at it, the power output would, would be 9 volts. The companies involved lied about the progress, cooked the books, and then silently abandoned at all. The kicker is, if you live in South Carolina and have electricity in your home, you're probably still paying for it. Why has nuclear power failed so categorically in the United States? Well, a multitude of reasons. Reason one, utilities overpromised on purpose. Executives hyped unrealistic projections in order to secure loans, sell bonds, raise rates, and secure government approval until they realized uh, they weren't going to make any money off this, and then they got the f*** out of town. Reason two, anti-nuclear lobbying. After Three Mile Island, and then again Chernobyl, anti-nuclear groups used their influence to slow the progress of these projects to a crawl. More delays equals more cost equals more cancellations. Reason three, something that is called regulatory capture. Some utility companies exploited regulatory loopholes, realizing that they could begin construction on a nuclear facility and then abandon it and still profit. And reason four, the fossil fuel gang. Oil and gas companies have lobbied for decades to kneecap these nuclear projects because nothing threatens the fossil fuel lobby more than a power plant that runs 24-7 for 80 years straight. What do we do with the abandoned nuclear reactors now? Well, there are a few options. We can turn them into training facilities. We can turn them into solar farms. We can turn them into data centers. What with the access to the water? I don't like that option. I'm just putting it out there. We could turn them into state or federal parks. Or we can do what most places are doing with them and just abandon them as a raccoon breeding ground. Some states have redeveloped these reactor land areas into parks or business zones, and others, most, have just abandoned them. A graveyard to billions of dollars in federal incompetence. Why does any of this matter? Well, because ghost reactors 
aren't just relics, they're symptoms of a greater problem. Symptoms of America's broken infrastructure system, political paralysis, financial mismanagement, and America's classic tradition of dreaming big and f***ing it all up at the 10-yard line. The U.S. could have the cleanest energy grid on Earth, but instead what we have is many billions of dollars worth of concrete rubble littering our country. Because... Because we went half-ass. Just don't go half-ass. Go whole-ass. If you're going to do anything, go whole-ass. I'm not here to say that I support Eisenhower's atomic plan for this country. In theory, yes, it's great. I don't agree with the government mandating these things and funding them because they get up every time they get up this time. They, they up. Oh, I dropped. I'm going to drop my cell phone. I hope it's not broken. They f it up this time. There are hundreds of billions of dollars worth of concrete littering our country. Just half-finished nuclear power plants. We were this close. We were this f***ing close. And we f***ing dropped the ball. Because nobody can f***ing agree to get anything done. And people were taking advantage of it. There's way more... It's way more complicated and convoluted than this video made it seem, but... God damn it, let's just fucking see something through to the fucking end! Hey, good news. Didn't break my phone. All of this to be said, the federal government cannot be trusted with your tax dollars. That's a recurring theme in my videos. I don't know how else to end this. We were so close. So close. Didn't happen. Maybe in the next life. Either way, as always, I have been Brandon Herrera. I'll see you when I see ya. Love you. Bye.